Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Doing a bunch of team digs again for week 240, this time all led by James Dunn. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, James Dunn, Christopher Groff, and Richard Ward have all dug up DOS games backslash PB backslash 3. Well, let's see what kind of pinball thing we have this time. Um, well, it's 64 kilobytes in a .com file, so definitely made with pinball construction set. And we got a small doc file, which we can probably just type out pretty simply. Um, yeah, it's just the default controls. Although it's showing... Well, that's interesting, because it's showing the um, the combinations to get various bonuses and stuff. And it looks like this is going to be like a card-themed pinball game. Interesting. Okay, so I guess just run it. Um, it's just three, right? Yep, three. Oh, wow, that actually took a bit to dial that in there. So, if I remember correctly, hit the button to start. There we go. And then... Whoop, I need to increase the power. There we go. So let's see how this table plays. Because there's a lot of elements on this one. We got a couple... We got four flippers going, two big ones at the bottom, and then two small ones at the sides. Actually, so far this has a very typical look. Like, there were a lot of pinball machines in, especially in the 60s and 70s, that had a very simple, symmetrical layout to them. So this is kind of reminding me of those. And card-themed pinball games were definitely not uncommon. So yeah, playing this one so far just seems like a, you know, pretty standard, pretty standard pinball table. There's nothing, um, too strange going on here, and it seems to play pretty well. And I think I just saved the ball from going down the middle there. <laughs> Not exactly a death save, as it were, but, you know, it's... If you've, if you've ever spent a lot of time playing real pinball machines, you'll know that the ball can sometimes do some pretty crazy things. Like... what just happened there? Um, I just lost the ball somehow. By shooting it into the king thing in the middle? That was kind of weird. Like, maybe maybe there's a gobble hole there, like, underneath the... Well, no, because the ball just bounced off of it there, right? That's very weird. Yeah, so watching the way the ball is moving when it hits those bumpers, the K there is not actually a bumper, but it... Yeah, that seems to be a gobble hole right there, which, okay, I don't approve of that. As I've probably explained before, gobble holes... In, are an ancient pinball concept where if you shoot the ball into it, you lose the ball. And the reason why nobody uses gobble holes anymore on pinball t machines is because they're, they're pretty stupid when it comes down to it. Like, it makes a little more sense when you're talking about um, any kind of redemption game where you're having to redeem, or where you're, you're getting to redeem the score that you get for prizes or such, or some such thing, but for a game where the entire purpose is to rack up a high score, gobble holes make no sense. And you know, I just noticed too that the name of the game is Three of a Kind, so I'm guessing the idea is, is that whenever you get, whoops, <laughs> whenever you get three of the same symbol is when you get um, bonus points and stuff going on. But yeah, this is actually, this is not bad, save for the gobble hole where the king is <laughs> in the middle of the table there. This is actually not that bad a PCS table. It's very standard in terms of the layout, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, if you experiment with your design and you end up with a table that nobody wants to play, then that's not exactly a good thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's three of a kind, a pinball construction set table made um, quite a while ago from the looks of it. And, quite frankly, it doesn't play that bad. Very standard, but that's not a bad thing. Next up, James Dunn and Joseph Adams have dug up win games backslash arcade backslash go for it. 
I've got a funny feeling this is going to be some kind of like whack-a-mole type of thing. Anyways, go for it. And we got a readme, ini, file id.diz, go for it, version 1.0. In this game, the purpose is to stop the gophers from overrunning your lawn. This is done by bopping them with a padded club. Yeah, that sounds like whack-a-mole. Position the mouse cursor over the gopher or other critter and click the left mouse button. Various points are awarded for each object. 50 points is deducted for each miss hit. For each miss hit. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A hit-miss ratio of 50% is required to continue to the next level. Bonus points are awarded... This is a very long file id.diz. Holy jeez. Like, these are supposed to be small files. Like, look at that. That's like twice the length of your typical file id.diz. It doesn't need to have, like, all of this detail. Just, just In this game, you your purpose is to stop gophers from overrunning your lawn. It's done by bopping them with a padded club. Done. You didn't need your instructional details about your score in your file id.diz. And looking at the readme here, it seems this game was made by a John Detroya, and it is released as shareware with a registration fee of $5 or $12 if you want to get a disc of it and listings of programs and upgrades and stuff like that. So, let's see what we actually have here. So, go for it. Okay. Um, that's interesting. This is taking up almost the whole screen, but not quite. But doesn't have a resizable border. Huh. It's kind of unusual, because typically if somebody's doing a fixed-sized window, they're going to have it, like, fit within a 640 by 480 screen, because most people would be on a 640 by 480 display. But this is sized for, like, this is almost perfectly sized to this 800 by 600 display. Except it's kind of not. Oh, this is very weird window size. Okay, so something I find kind of ridiculous here is we've got the gophers, which are worth 100 points. We've got the rabbits, which are worth 500. And then we have skunks, which take away 200 points, which, okay, I get that. And then we have balloon bombs and super bombs, which both serve the same effect to just end the game, but somehow the super bomb is worse because it says to stay far away from them, but these ones it just says to stay away from them. But what's weird about this is that then you have the plunger, which looks like it's more destructive than either of these two, and yet this one is worth a thousand points, but also removes one gopher hole. So I'm wondering if that's like a good or a bad thing. I guess it depends on how the game plays out, but... Anyway, so F2 for new game. So... Okay, so it generates a few holes to start, and then we just clonk the gophers on the head. Oh yeah, they don't stay up very long, and I've got it on slow speed. So this is the first level, so I'm guessing that once we get a, hit a particular number of them, I'm not sure how many, that it will move on to the next level. Oh, I just noticed there's a timer in the corner. So, okay, so the timer runs out. We're advancing to the next level and some more holes get put up. So I guess the trick is just, oh, so we don't want to hit, what? Wait, what? I didn't hit that. Oh, there's something just occurred to me here. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new game here. It said to stay away from those, um, those balloon bombs and super bombs. I've got a funny feeling that normally what I have to do here is I have actually have to click before it registers the hit on the gophers. But I got a funny feeling with those bombs, if you just move the mouse near them, that it counts against you. So that would be interesting because that would mean that you'd actually have to keep the paddle away from the holes so as not to accidentally immediately get hit by those things. But like, I mean, in this first level here, we've only got gophers, so I'm not really too concerned about that here. Okay, so this is kind of weird, having to keep the cursor away. And like, the gophers don't stay up long. I can't imagine... Oh, yep, yep, there was a rabbit. It stayed up very short. Yeah. I was right about that, because I just moved the curse just moved the cursor near the balloon bomb and it ends the game. And this is only the second level, and I've got it set to slow speed. 
I don't think I want to know how fast fast is, but let's just try it. See what happens. Oh yeah, that's... <laughs> how in the world are you supposed to react to that? <laughs> they stay up for a fraction of a second. Actually, I do remember seeing something in the README. Because um, it actually had something in here about... Yeah. So some of the speed settings in GoFred are maintained in the INI. Be manually adjusted to suit your needs. So you can actually um, change what the speeds are for each of these um, settings. So slow says that the gopher appears for 700 milliseconds. That's less than a second. That's like, that's very short. <laughs> um, is that what it's actually doing? Yeah. Uh, sorry, my voice cracked up there when I was trying responding to opening this file because I noticed the high scores are in plain text here, so you could just edit them to your heart's content. But then you can't attach a name to it, so I guess it's not really that impressive. But that, yeah, 700 milliseconds is how long the gopher stay up for. That's, that's not, that's not slow. <laughs> that's 0.7 seconds. Uh, okay, th th this needs some adjusting. Um, let's say slow is, let's say slow is two seconds and medium is one second and fast is half a second. That makes a little more sense to my brain, but let's see how that actually plays. So I'll save that and then I guess I should probably restart the program or just make sure it didn't. Okay. So launch it again. So let's change it back to slow, and let's see how long they stay up now. So we got our holes popping up. Oh yeah, they do stay up longer now, so it is actually obeying the time settings that I put in. Because yeah, like, I mean, part of the thing with doing any kind of whack-a-mole type of game is that you need to kind of have a balance between how much you're moving, how much you're moving your mallet versus actually a, trying to attack whatever's popping up. And it doesn't help that in this game, you can't just hold yourself over a position because if one of those bombs shows up and your mouse is anywhere near it, the game ends. So that kind of does, that kind of makes it difficult to actually, um, oh, there goes a rabbit. <laughs> that kind of makes it difficult to actually plan out like where you want to keep your cursor. Plus, here's the other thing too, and this is some, maybe this is different in the later levels, but only one gopher shows up at a time, or just one thing in general. Whereas in an actual whack-a-mole type of game, you would have multiple things popping up at a time. Okay, so we should be advancing to level three fairly shortly here. So just hit a few more of these guys, and there's the white flag, so advancing to next level. So we get a few more holes. There's a skunk, we don't want to hit the skunk, because skunk loses points. And then that would destroy a hole. So given that the number of holes can constantly increases, I guess it kind of makes sense to destroy them, because then that makes for fewer holes that you have to worry about. Not to mention, given that the those other bombs that show up, the fewer holes you have to worry about, the more spots you have on the screen that you can hold your cursor without... Um, destroy without accidentally hitting anything. Okay, so advancing to the next level. So level four here, I'm going to guess, has even more stuff to worry about. Well, we haven't seen the super bombs yet, and I'm guessing that if you get the mouse even closer to the super bombs, that it actually destroys everything faster that way. Well, okay, that's not, that didn't come out right. Basically, yeah, I'm guessing that has a longer range. Whoa, that has a much longer range. Anyways, that was Go For It. It's a fairly competent whack-a-mole game. The default settings in terms of speeds were a little too fast, I would say. And plus, only one thing can pop up at a time, which is kind of atypical. But beyond that, it plays perfectly fine. And the guy's only asking $5 for it, so, you know, it's not bad for what it is. And our last take for today from James Dunn and Happy Kitty is win games backslash strategy backslash box world. This is gonna be a Sokoban clone. We know this. Like, it, it, with a name like box world in the strategy folder, what else could it possibly be? Right? But anyways, file id.diz. Box world, an interesting animated puzzle game in which levels become increasingly more difficult. 
Okay. <laughs> Previously, I was complaining about a file id.diz that was too wordy. This one's kind of not wordy enough. So, yeah, there wasn't really much of a standard in terms of how those files were written. But apparently, the order form for this is saying you get 100 levels with the registered version, and that it's actually only $5. So, once again, not that, not that big a payment for such a program. And apparently the person to make, the person responsible for this is a Zheng Wang Zhang? Did I get that right? Probably not. <laughs> but, okay, so let's see what we got here. Box World. Oh yeah, it's Sokoban. <laughs> we called it from a mile away, right? Although this is interesting here because it's showing um, these rules here and it almost makes it look like you can actually push multiple boxes at a time. Like, that's not unheard of with Sokoban games, but it's definitely not common to see that. Also, I like that it, there's a go to world option here, so you can input the actual stage you want to go to. So, if I put in 100, I doubt it's going to go up to that. No. Oh, that's weird. It actually has mouse control, because I accidentally clicked when I was going back. And But anyways, um, what about... Whoops. What about 10? Does it go up to 10? It does not. So how many worlds do we actually get in the... Uh... Okay, go to world doesn't seem to be doing anything, so... That's kind of weird. Maybe you're only allowed to go to stages that you've actually cleared before? Like, that wouldn't surprise me. Well, let's see if we... let's see what we can do here. So, let's clear this stage. You've done a good job. Okay, let's quickly test if we can actually push multiples. We cannot. So whatever it was trying to convey in the instructions here, it's definitely not right. Okay, that's weird. Um, last time I went into the instructions here, some of this didn't actually appear on the screen. Huh. But yeah, it's, I guess it is showing that you can use the mouse. It's saying, saying this is good, but this is not good. Okay, so so far we've got pretty standard initial Sokoban levels. So let's see if we can get through these pretty quickly and see if we can actually find like where, how far we can get into this before it cuts us off. Okay, so finishing the third level here. Okay, moving on to the fourth one. Well, I do like that these init in initial levels here are actually like introductory type of levels, like not um too difficult or too ridiculous in terms of difficulty. Not sure, still not sure where when it's gonna cut me off, but I suspect it's not gonna go on forever. Okay, end of level seven. Now we're into eight. This is actually going by pretty quickly, so I'm gonna see pretty soon whether or not this cuts well, unless I make stupid mistakes. We're gonna see pretty soon where and when this cuts us off. Okay, so I just made a simple mistake here, but there is an undo button. You can only undo one move, but that is pretty handy to do if you accidentally go like one space too far trying to f trying to get around something or such. Okay, I finally figured out what I was doing wrong with this level here, so should be clearing it relatively shortly. Just gotta move a couple more boxes here. And then we'll be on to level 10, and I got a funny feeling if it's going to cut me off at any point, it's going to cut me off at level 10, because that seems like it would be a good stopping spot. So, level 10 here. Okay, now level 10, done. And it goes on to level 11. Okay, so there is definitely more than 10 levels, but I think I've played enough of this for now. Um, but let's check out this go to world thing. So if I say go to world 4, okay, so that's working now, and if I go to world 7, Okay, so as I suspected, it allows you to go to levels that you've cleared or the last level that you didn't clear. But if you try to go further, it doesn't let you. So that makes sense. So yeah, that was Box World. It's a basic Sokoban clone. I think these are the actual Sokoban levels, though. So it's not so much a clone as it is a direct, direct ripoff. But regardless, it plays fine. So like, I mean, if you wanted a Windows 3.1 version and don't mind the fact that it's not official, well, here you go.